thanks, Ted. Um, yeah, so I'm Aapo Kyrölä. Uh, I'm a fifth-year PhD student in CMU, advised by Carlos and Guy Blalock. Actually, I think I'm the only non-PhD, of the first non-PhD now, so maybe this is completely trivial for you. Um, so, but I would like to start by actually thanking Pankaj, who I met a year ago in this same workshop, and he asked me to uh, join Twitter for the fall to work on CraftG and using their real data. And that allows me to start with a humble boast that actually you can just use the basic laptop that, that they give their interns to run computation on the full Twitter follow graph. And I, I'm quite proud of this because uh, uh, I don't think I have seen any academic work which has done any uh, graph computation on this scale. And you can do the computation roughly the same time as they run on the Hadoop cluster. And you can do your own calculation which way is cheaper or uses less energy. So uh, what is CraftG? Uh, Carlos uh, started, uh, already introduced CraftG in the morning, so I don't talk about it much. But uh, basically the CraftG project started the same time as the guys started working CraftLab 2. So CraftLab 2 uh, solved the problem of uh, uh, running huge graphs on a cluster, but on CraftG or Craft Wawa, I looked at how to do that on a disk. And uh, these both were presented in OSDI last year. Now, uh, how does CraftG work? Um, I don't have time to go into the details, so you are invited to uh, read the paper. Uh, but the basic idea is that uh, in CraftG, uh, we, we split the graph into P shards, or the edges into P shards, and then we compute one subgraph at a time. And for one sub, each subgraph, we will load one shard completely into memory. That has all the in edges for the vertices in that. Uh, shard, and then we we'll load from all the other shards uh, uh, contiguous blocks of uh, edges. And because of this, there are only p random accesses to the disk per subgraph, and you need to do p subgraph for one full pass. Uh, in total, you do only p squared reads and writes on one full pass of a graph. And because p is usually in the dozens or so, this means that you do maybe hundreds or maybe thousand random accesses per iteration. So this allows, allows CraftG to work both well on SSDs and old style hard drives. Um, but uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit, why, why would you use CraftG or why is CraftG interesting? So uh, first of all, and it will it provides quite good performance. I will talk about this soon more. Maybe more important, it provides great scalability. So you can run almost any size of graph on, the, on just a laptop or a Mac mini or even smaller. Um, third, it exposes the same uh, programming model as GraphLab uh, version one actually, or Pregol. So it's very, very familiar vertex-centric programming. But, uh, to Danny's, uh, Danny Bixon's delight, it also allows you much more hacking. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't constrain you to work it strictly in some abstraction. Instead, because it runs only on one computer, it's much easier to do your own solutions and just try things out. In addition to this uh, basic craft lab um, functionality, it supports some new uh, things like streaming crafts and random walks, which I'm going to talk about today more. It has quite a bit of applications, uh, mostly, most uh, popular is the collaborative, collaborative filtering toolkit developed by Danny, and it's really easy to get started. So you just download it and run into your IDE. So, let's move to a little bit into details about performance. So when I started this project, I, I looked at um, uh, recent Results published in literature about graph computation and kind of took them as my benchmark that I, I want to do computation on a Mac Mini in roughly the same time. So that if I can do that, it's probably enough for my, most. So uh, as a first example, uh, we have a page rank, which in you know, one paper using this uh, Twitter graph, which was just uh, has been used today many times, they used Spark running on 50 machines and uh, it took eight minutes to uh, solve the problem. And craft T is about half slower on a Mac Mini. 
Now, uh, the other example is uh, belief propagation, which is a, a graphical model computation, a machine learning algorithm, and uh, using a Pegasus, which is a Hadoop-based system by CMU. A hundred machines, it took about uh, 22 minutes, 21 minutes. Craft G lost again um, about 26 minutes on a Mac Mini. Uh, then uh, to look at um, like the overhead of the disk computation, I compared Craft G to Craft Lab version number one, uh, which was a shared memory system, and it was running on eight cores. And in that case, uh, Craft G was about uh, or Craft Lab was about twice as fast as Craft G. So this shows that if the computational complexity is quite high, then the overhead of the disk operations is not that bad at all. And then, the, as a fourth example, actually, uh, Carlos already discussed this. It's triangle accounting, and uh, it's a bit, uh, well, I, I won't talk about it. <laughs> so, uh, as a conclusion, a graph G, you can solve as big problems as any other distributed systems, basically. Of course, maybe the Facebook scale is, for example, already too much, but in anything you have seen in the academic work. And with comparable performance. So, if you are happy with those, uh, results, you are probably happy what you get with Craft G, with much less effort on setting up the systems and so on. So let's talk about scalability then. Um, what, what, what is the imp most important scalability metric is that, or for me was that, if you double the size of the input, the graph, the running time should also roughly double. So this means uh, it's very, uh, uh, you can easily estimate how much, uh, how long does it take to run a computation. So I measure performance by throughput, which is the number of edges it can process per second. So when the graph uh, size uh, increases, this throughput should remain constant to uh, reach our goal. So here on the x-axis you have the graph size measured as the number of edges, and y-axis is this throughput. And with our test cases, uh, uh, it's roughly constant. It's not completely constant because there are some uh, differences in the graph structure which affect this. And uh, especially the small graphs, they might fit into, for example, file system cache. Why this is nice, uh, referring to Pankaj actually talk, is that if you have uh, uh, your system running on Craft G when you are just a beginning startup and it runs on your some more Craft, you don't have to be worried that when you get the explosive growth that it would stop working and you have to run to get a cluster or I I install more memory. Now, other uh, aspect of the scalability is uh, maybe a little bit surprising. It's a thought I call Craft G squared. Uh, so, because Craft G, even on a one computer, can solve really big problems. So it becomes a viable choice for production systems. So if you care about throughput, for example, uh, maybe you need to run uh, compute recommendations every day or even every week for your users, uh, and not latency, then uh, this becomes a choice. So uh, this is a made up example. So let's see we have a, say we have a distributed craft system running on six machines. And, uh, let's assume it uh, solves seven tasks in time t. And this time t is the time the single computer system, for example, Craft G, solves one problem. So, uh, and uh, let's assume on these six machines, the distributed system is a bit faster. Now, if we double the size of the cluster to 12 machines, then no distributed system basically scales linearly. Instead, you get maybe 60% uh, or something like that more throughput when you double the size of the cluster, and here I assumed you can do 11 tasks in time t. But the single system, machine system is very simple. You just add more machines, and each of them does the same job. So you double the throughput. And this is applicable for cases for, example, if you need to compute many tasks on the same graph. For example, Twitter, if they compute recommendations for users, they all are in the same social network but they have di different initial values for the computation. And I, I'm, I'm not the only one who is talking about the economics of scaling uh, like this. There has been recently 
uh, stories in New York Times and hot startups like SI Sense. And even uh, now a report by Gartner, so it must be right. That, uh, uh, that the economics, are, so if you can fit your problem in one machine, uh, it's relatively much more efficient than managing a cluster and so on. And maybe you don't have to hire people like, uh, well, you know the news. <laughs> um, uh, ju just a quick plug uh, that uh, there is uh, quite a big number of applications, and especially thank for uh, Danny, who has uh, uh, implemented all the collaborative filtering algorithms. There are at least ten of them, and uh, more are being implemented. And it's really easy to get started. You just uh, it's open source. There is both Java and C++ versions, and the Java version has a Scala, Scala uh, interface, so it's pretty nice. So let me go to now a little bit more technical talk that what is new in Craft G. So Craft G was um, released a year ago in this uh, same workshop, and since we have been developing quite a bit of it. So the initial version uh, required that, your, uh, that you store in your each edge and vertex a um, constant size value. But for some computation like random walks, the amount of data stored in each edge can change all the time. So, uh, uh, nowadays Craft can support uh, uh, dynamic values by, uh, and we made this possible by splitting the shards into small blocks. So, in that, uh, in that way, each block can shrink and extend uh, independently. Second thing uh, was that there is now a way to run Craft inside Hadoop using a pig wrapper. And that, this is nice because many companies store the data in Hadoop and or, or HDFS and also want to output back to HDFS. This is actually work I did at Twitter as well. Uh, Pankaj in the last week asked me to wrap up my research and write it as a pig script. Of course, I didn't want to do that, so what I did, I wrapped Craft inside a pig function. <laughs> Uh, uh, third thing, uh, third uh, new feature is that you can uh, run uh, craft queries on the craft uh, shards quite efficiently. And fourth, what I'm going to talk now more is a system for running random walks or trunkard walks, but we run them millions or even billions of them at a time, so that's why the algorithm is called trunkard mob. Uh, so actually, we just had. Uh, I think three talks where random walks were mentioned, the Google talks and Pankaj talk at least. Uh, and the canonical algorithm for random walks is personalized page rank. So you want to compute recommendations for each user and to simulate page rank, you actually run, simulate uh, actual random walk particles. So some other applications as well in the recommender system such as fault rank and in knowledge base inference done at CMU. So how would you do random walk in an in-memory graph such, such as Kashavari? Is that um, you just simply simulate one walk at a time or several walks in parallel. And you hop, uh, when you simulate the walk, you need to hop around the graph. Well, this would be very slow on graph G because each hop on the graph could require loading a whole shard from the disk. It would be also slow in many distributed systems because each hop could require a hop over the network to the different craft partition. So how we, uh, how we solve this in craft is that we reverse the thinking. Instead of doing one walk a time, we do billions or millions of walks a time. And instead of considering one uh, walk a time, we consider one vertex a time. So the idea is that because Craft-G uh, operates one, uh, it loads a block of vertices at a time, and for each block of vertices, it, can, uh, it checks that which walks are currently at these vertices and uh, moves them one hop forward. Now, uh, this is uh, possible quite efficiently. I don't know if you can see the great animations. Um, this, uh, This is uh, possible quite efficiently because uh, to encode the state of each walk, you ch just need four bytes to store what is the current, uh, current location of the walk and what was its source vertex. And uh, 
Uh, this also work I did at Twitter, so with 144 gigabytes of RAM, I could run 15 billion of random walks in parallel. Um, this was on Java, so I think with C++ you could do way more. And uh, with this I could uh, compute simple recommendations for 15 million users at a time. It took about one day to run this whole operation, but because you do it for 15 million users at a time, the throughput is actually pretty good. So uh, that was about simulating the walks, but we also need to keep track of the walks to actually compute the, we are interested about the distribution of the walks. So for example, of the walks starting from my vertex, uh, what are the most popular endpoints? So, so for that, uh, you use a separate component called Trunkard Companion, uh, which can run on a different machine or on the same machine. And this uh, Trunkard mob algorithm sends the changes on each uh, iteration. Uh, and it keeps track uh, efficiently about it. Uh, and because this also can require quite a lot of memory, we can use uh, 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 algorithms to focus, cut the tails of these distributions to save some memory. Uh, so on simple application, uh, not simple, but uh, application I implemented of this was actually what Pankaj just explained. And uh, so I replicated there WTF algorithm uh, based on the paper. Uh, so using this trunk card mob, uh, I compute a circle of trust. And then using this uh, graph query system I have now, uh, I create this bipartite graph which has on the left side the circle of trust and on the right side the followers of the circle of trust. And then I run salsa on just a simple algorithm. So uh, the step one, complete the circle of trust, I use trunk card mob. And for step two, we use neighborhood queries over shards. Um, so as a conclusion, uh, CraftG can run your favorite craft algorithm on extremely large graphs on just your laptop. Um, it has some unique features compared to other systems, for example, this random work simulation and streaming graphs. And the most popular is the uh, collaborative filtering toolkit, so you all should try that. So thank you. So yeah, we have time for questions for Apple. Did you just single-handedly kill big data? <laughs> I'm uh, just graduating, so I should probably not what are the say anything. Where this would not be applicable, where you really need lots of uh, for example, one, so uh, I maybe said that many craft, most craft lab algorithms can be implemented on craft G, but for example, LDA, latent directory allocation is an example that I don't know how to implement. Uh, so, uh, other cases is that if you need a huge amount of computation, for example, if you need to uh, compute very large latent factors in matrix factorization.